what are the elemental spirits in the book of Enoch? And what does the Bible say about elemental spirits? I think the conclusion today may surprise you as we actually get into the mythos of biblical literature, faith, spirituality, paranormal, and the mythologies that are all around us every single day. If we know where to look and how to look at them, welcome everyone to the Cub Cooker Supernatural Podcast. It is a beautiful afternoon. It is Monday, November 7th, and we are continuing our afternoon study in the Book of Enoch. And uh, I am working on putting all the Book of Enoch sessions in one playlist on YouTube. So if you want to catch those, you can jump over to my YouTube channel or to cubcooker.com. You can find all the stuff over there. Ways to support me, ways to join our private Mythos group, um, as well as uh, dive into more of the training material that we have here uh, to continue your spiritual walk. So as we get in today, uh, we're going to look at some verses directly out of the Bible, as well as Enoch. Um, and uh, let's see, finally some fruit uh, overdue, my friend. What is up, Merle? Welcome uh, for being here, my friend. Uh, Enoch is my favorite book of the Bible. Awesome. E uh, Edie, Edie Bath, Edie Bath. I think I said that right. So, uh, welcome. Thank you for being here. Uh, so really we're going to talk about some kind of weird stuff as we get into book of Enoch. What are the elemental spirits in Enoch? Are they really called elemental spirits? Not necessarily, but we see that, uh, he wants to know like the secrets he he's asking for that. Uh, and he's given a lot of these secrets and, um, much like we do every day here on this podcast, just seeking that authentic reality, uh, authentic spirituality, uh, not attached to any certain tradition or bent, um, of religion. Uh, with that said, we welcome everyone of all walks of faith, religions, races, orientations. We don't care uh, where you do or don't go to church, who you're married to, what country you're from. As long as you're here in love and light, uh, just welcome. Uh, as long as you're here to be uh, a seeker of that authentic reality. So for me, I'm personally what you would consider a Christian mystic. Um, I seek and teach and uh, I feel like I embody that universal Christ. Uh, that's what I try to do at least. Um, I am learning more every day and that's what I'm here to share. So, um, as we look for that Christ energy, that Christ consciousness, again, that universal Christ we see present in the story of Jesus. Um, I look at all of that in an esoteric mindset, uh, kind of leaving room for all of that personal spiritual interpretation rather than trying to adopt a doctrine or dogma around it. So with that said, uh, we have a lot of people that come on here that are in the midst of struggling with that, um, even defending that still. And I think we're in 2022 where we are, by all intents and purposes, in a brand new age. We've moved through the age of information, and, and we should be moving into the age of enlightenment here. Uh, the age of open-mindedness, the age of people actually experiencing authentic reality. We have everything that we could ever want or need right now, especially here in the West. Uh, we have all the creature comforts. We have all the stuffs. We have all the foods. We have you know everything that we need here in the West. Now, there's plenty of stuff going on in other parts of the world that we just don't even see here. Um, there are so many energies running around us, and we've been taught and tuned out of those energies. Um, and we've replaced authentic spirituality and faith in a being that wants to embody us to make the world a better place and actually help people find that path to quote unquote salvation to build the kingdom of God here on earth. Uh, and we've traded that for uh, little statues on the dash or crosses around our neck or, or whatever that is, even if it's not within the Christian um, traditions, you know, there's plenty of other ideologies around that, that are not within ourselves, but they're looking outside of ourselves to gain energy and understanding and enlightenment and peace and all of those things. So with that said, uh, that's how I'm going to approach this today as a mythos, as a mythology, uh, a mythos is merely a set of agreements that we have about ourself or a thing. 
So our mythos about history, about uh, biblical literature, about spiritual texts or uh, the origin of creation or angels or demons or whatever, that mythos is going to determine our worldview. And the more we define that mythos, sometimes that can really pin us in a corner where we can't explain certain things around that. And it causes us internal struggle rather than just being open and saying, hey, I don't know. Here's the mythology behind it. Mythology doesn't mean it's not true. It just means um, that we have a representation of some things that were probably oral tradition, maybe happened. Uh, maybe were esoteric, maybe uh, were a story to try to understand how humanity came to a certain point because no one knew. Um, so I use the term mythology in a loose manner of it's up to your interpretation. It's, it's your design for your reality. A mythos is by all intents and purposes your operating system for your life. And that's going to determine so many things on how you experience reality. That's one of my missions here. Uh, the acronym we use here on this channel and within this community is Mythos. It stands for manis manifest yourself through authentic or through holistic um, original spirituality. Sorry, I'm trying to look at comments and keep talking. That doesn't work. I need to do one thing at once, uh, one thing at a time. Uh, my wife never understands why I can't multitask and you just witnessed exactly why I don't multitask. So uh, with that said, uh, manifest yourself through holistic original spirituality. You're the only one that can originate your spirituality because that mythos, those agreements are going to define what you experience in the physical and the spiritual realm. Uh, that's just how it goes. So, uh, Edie Bath, uh, God says plainly only worship me. Uh, the God of the old Testament does for sure, for sure. But, uh, the father that Christ came to reveal, uh, it was just, you know, not that jealous God, you know, he, he lets us, uh, find our path and he wants us to find that frequency of love. That, that's how we connect with him authentically. So, um, you know, anything other than that love is, um, for me, you know, just led me into all the wrong places. So, uh, let's see, we're better at laser focus. Um, I think, yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm definitely a one track like, and then, you know, I'll get rabbit trailed and then I'm on that one track for a minute. So, so we're going to read Enoch today and really just, uh, again, open-mindedly look at what is this mythology behind Enoch. You know, uh, e the, the story of Enoch is not really new just to Enoch. It's, it's a combination of a bunch of different mythologies. Um, and what we're about to see here is like even uh, I would go as far as to say maybe even some Norse mythology mixed into this. Uh, we don't know. Um, now that can be interpreted in multiple ways. Enoch really experienced this. He was taken up in some sort of craft or airship or, uh, spiritually, um, particleized and beamed into different areas of existence or different realms, or he had a really crazy trip or he, um, had some sort of just divine supernatural experience with this. So however you want to interpret it. Um, the other thing is, um, Hold on, I can't. I can't focus today. So, no, ma'am. No, you cannot chew on that. You're gonna have to get it in reverse. There you go. Uh, got dogs chewing on squeak toys, and that squeaking will just totally distract me. It's been a focus, uh, a day to try to focus. So. Um, with that said, so, uh, yeah, take Enoch with like whatever mythology you want. I'm not telling you it's gospel truth. I'm not telling you anything is gospel truth. I'm telling you that that truth, that light is within you. And, uh, when you know it, you know it. Um, and no doctrine or dogma will suffice once you experience it. So, um, with that said, like I said, we're, we're open here. So we have so many different walks of faith here. Please be respectful. Um, just be nice to everybody. Like, I, I don't know why I have to say that, but I do because there's always comments and there's always people and the stuff. And even you guys, I, I appreciate when you try to stand up and defend what we're doing. But at the same time, I really want to make sure everyone feels seen and heard on this channel. Like if you're coming here 
with a message and it's focused around that dogma, um, I want you to feel heard and seen because I want to help you work through that. And I want to help you find what we're talking about here. I want to help you experience like a whole nother level of your faith and your sp spirituality. So that, that's what we're here for. So evil trying to block the fruit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's see. Uh, no Enoch rode on the wings of a pigeon to see everything. Well, that's, that's possible. That's possible. I'd be a big old pigeon. So definitely maybe like a, a mythical, uh, rainbow pigeon. That's probably, probably what it was. So, um, so we talked about, um, uh, the, the beasts here uh, of Enoch. We had Leviathan and Behemoth, and we talked about that. Um, would have been on Friday, I believe. Hold on, I have to kick the dogs out. They were super quiet, and then I started. Just one of those days. One of those days. Um, I'm telling you guys, this has been, I had such a download last night. Like just, I felt like in such a good place of like, I know what I'm doing. I'm doing the right thing. Like this is it. This is where God's led me to. And then like today it's been just one thing after another. And so I'm just trying to stay in a really centered place right now. Um, like a place of just like inner safety here and try not to get too far out from anything. Um, so bear with me. Just know that. Uh, I appreciate you, Merle. Merle says the dogs are fine. We don't mind. Uh, and I appreciate you guys on that. For me, it's totally um, like highly, highly distracting because I like it. Like my old studio, I had a little waterfall in it and like incense and just like really in this place of Zen every time so I could just flow. Uh, here, that is not the case. I have a train, I have dogs, I have neighbors, I have cars, I have just internet issues here, like everything. So, uh, Lynn says, I feel you. So, so looking at this mythology here, um, we had the female monster named Leviathan uh, dwelling in the abyss of the ocean. And I talked about that. And then, uh, so it was like a beast that split Leviathan and Behemoth. And so you had the desert dwelling um, in Duodon, uh, in the waste of the wilderness, the behemoth. And if you guys know that from Job, that's that's a big uh, big tip off to like what this is. Um, can't say that on here because that could be conspiratorial. You know, I uh, let me let me speak on that for a second, guys. This whole I can't even say the word censor blank. I can't even I can't even finish that because it gets it gets the whole thing messed up here with with the the social media gods. You know I, I, I'm using a a site to upload the the private videos for our community, the people that support what we're doing here. They're a part of the Mythos community and um, been uploading those to there. And now I share them over to the group on another platform. Well, that platform has started warning me about the other platform because it's built on blockchain. Oh, my gosh. That there may not be trustworthy informations over there. And I have to be super dramatic with this just so it's not a, a complete sentence here. You guys know what I'm talking about. This is getting painful. Um, the reason I was uploading to this other platform is so that I could share trainings that are like here here's what i do this this and this and here's from the book and like try this in your life and blah, blah blah like you know because a lot of times that type of stuff on here is not well received i don't share that like publicly i wanted it to live over there on the on the uh decentralized type of network so that it would be there forever for our community no matter where that group ends up in the future, it, you know, be it a metaverse or whatever, those trainings are there. They're evergreen trainings, by the way. Like I have over 500 videos that I'm working on uploading. But every time I try to share that link into the group, I get a warning that basically I'm going to go on watch if I share this link. And so 
that's why I present this stuff the way I do, guys. Because it's all mythology until it's not. Until you create it as reality. So. Um, let's see. Uh, I had some visions. Uh, then I had a bunch of downloads. And God told me to clean house and throw out uh, crystals, etc. And study nothing but the Bible. Well, hey, happy uh, little tree of life. Good for you. Uh, if that's the journey you're on, good luck for you, my friend. Um, I've studied nothing but the Bible my whole life. And so here I am. So shalom, Tiger Sight. What is up? How are you doing? Welcome. Um, so with that said, I know rabbit trail, rabbit trail. But that's why I talk about mythologies. Because guys, I don't care if you literally believe any of this or not. I really don't care. Because I got plenty of people on here that literally believe stuff that are complete. Hmm. <laughs> Can't say that on here either. I don't care what you literally believe. I care what you practice. And I care how you view yourself. Because if you don't love you, you treat other people like crap. And you hurt other people. And you take advantage of other people. And you tear them down. And I'm saying you as in the royal you, everybody in the room here, me too. Like, that's where I came out of. I came out of a system that said, none of this is mythology. This is all literal. You have to believe it literally, even though none of the timelines work, even though it makes no sense. Even though th there's people that, that spend hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars going to schools of theology to try to prove all of this stuff, and they still can't give you an answer. And I just don't think that God is that complicated. I think he sent... His son, his prophet, his enlightened being, his ascended master, over and over and over and over and over. We have one main timeline story with the fullness of Jesus Christ. I believe that story, but I don't necessarily take every part of that story as literal. I try to understand what does it mean in me? What is the Christ in me? Lynn says, teach on. I really appreciate your research. Nothing wrong with spreading uh, light and love. Thank you, Lynn. I appreciate that. Um, so with that said, thank you guys for the roses. God bless you. That's what's up. Thank you. Uh, we got a roses download going up here right now. Those roses are tips and they help me keep doing this full time. Thank you guys. God bless you for that call of gaming. Thank you very much. Uh, Kathy, thank you for being here. Um, so with this said, um, yeah, I look at all of this stuff, guys. I don't practice anything outside of myself, by the way. I don't do rituals or incantations or any of this stuff. I believe in magic. I believe it's esoteric. I believe it's within us. I believe it's the very kingdom of God. I believe the magi or magos that came to visit Christ, they knew how to read the matrix and understand what was going on within time, within space, within reality. Thank you guys for the butterflies. Amen. Love the butterflies. Um, this is important. It, it's important to me because I believed for so long that either Enoch was true and the Bible wasn't, or the Bible was true and Enoch was, or neither of them were true. And when I adopted the idea of mythology, guys, I realized there's a much deeper level of esoteric understanding out there that can enlighten you, help you, and bring you to a point of actual love for yourself and for your fellow man to actually serve others. That's why I show up here twice a day. I've had many people tell me, quit doing it twice a day. Why are you doing so much work? I've had people, uh, there was a guy talking about podcasts, like, oh, your podcast will get monetized quicker. If you only do one a day, it'll trick the system into whatever. I don't care. I'm here twice a day and I'm, and I'm looking at mythologies and we're learning so much from them. And that's why this is fascinating. There's a, there's a scripture over here in Colossians two, eight. Why do I not like Colossians? Oh yeah. He said it. Oh, he's a Christian. He said, yeah, I don't like Colossians. I don't like Romans, I don't like Acts, I don't like any of those books because I see an agenda and I don't like that. I like the Gospels because I see the agenda of Christ is love and enlightenment and unity and serving others and, and manifesting the very fruit of the kingdom of God on the earth. And everything else is fear, 
and structure and a plan and this and that and egos. And, and I just see that guys, my heart energy sees that my spirit sees that. And by the way, I've experienced it. There just was no fruit for me in all of this other stuff. And so I'm going to read the introduction over here on Bible gateway to Colossians, just, just to show you guys like how and why I read all of this. Uh, as you should. Yeah. Um, I should distrust the Pauline writings. Yeah, that's, uh, and I won't say who's behind all of that, but, um, obviously Rome had a huge, huge hand in, in all of that, especially after Christ, uh, was not walking the earth anymore. Um, there was what I call the, the great sweep up to kind of sweep everything into one location, make sure that it had all the walls built and that there was a existential temple or prison built again around the ideologies and the love. Uh, Annie, I have not watched the chosen. I need to, I hear those guys are pretty rad and I know they've gotten a lot of, a lot of flack for including some, uh, JW stuff or whatever. But you know, again, I don't care. It's like, it's, if they're, if they're, if they're dropping the knowledge, the gnosis that I'm down for that. So the reason that I'm I'm not all in. By the way, watch Mary Magdalene on Netflix. I talked about that on Friday. Like I gave a whole review on that. Like wow, like so good. Go watch that, please, please. Um, and then we'll we'll be on the same wavelength here. Colossians two eight says, "See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit according to human tradition, according." to the elemental spirits of the world and not according to Christ. And another saying in here is not just elemental spirits, but or elementary principles, uh, which, which would be considered elementary as in like from the beginning, like the ancient principles and traditions of like reading the stars, um, having festivals at the right time because like it was important to be thankful at certain times. Like there are different energies on the planet. You have different energies in you meditate and pray, uh, and fast at the right times. Like, and it's not just at a right time. It's like, you have to be in tune with your own self. And so you had all of these ancient philosophies that like they were speaking out against, and you had a group called the Gnostics, who followed Christ and took this deep message from him. And then they were like, Oh my gosh, this makes so much sense. And he's serving like this one spirit father. And that spirit father is in all of us. And we, in the kingdom is within us. And we're the ones that are going to go out and like plant the seeds and bear the fruit and manifest it. Like, and it was beautiful. And then you have like the early church and like the whole thing with Paul and they didn't really like each other. And I won't go into a whole lot of that, but, uh, the theme of Colossians is Paul writes to demonstrate that Christ is supreme over every human philosophy and accomplishment. Um, a group called Gnostics derived from the word knowledge claim that they possess privileged supernatural knowledge necessary for salvation. The apostle Paul wrote this letter to true believers in the small city of Colossae, located in the southwest interior of modern Turkey to warn about the subtle arguments and false teachings that threatened to undermine the Colossians' faith. Paul intended to make clear the nature and identity of Jesus in order to refute those who challenged Jesus' deity and authority. The letter emphasizes the supremacy of Christ uh, and what that means for everyday living, and offers specific ways to develop attributes and actions that honor the Lord. So, I mean, it doesn't sound bad on paper, but you get into it and there's some, I mean, there's just some wild stuff, like some limiting stuff that really, I've watched so many things break out amongst churches and church friends and families and uh, because of this type of doctrine. And I've had arguments with friends that are like, like good friends um, of mine and, um, that like, you know, we don't even talk anymore because they believe that. And I believe like the words of Christ and really nothing more. Like that's kind of where I draw my line. If you will, I look at everything else as, as someone's understanding of that. 
Uh, yes, exactly. Uh, Lynn says Paul just reset the law within the New Testament. Exactly. Like uh, it's like just rebuilding the temple again rather than being the temple. And and I think that that's why Christ came to reveal that. Like it wasn't to tear anyone down. It was to reveal that. Um, and so you just you had a lot of that. And, and we have that very thing going on within the comments here. And I've got, you know, a ton of other friends that are spiritual influencers here. And they're getting the same things, guys. And it's it's like, that's why I like approaching the mythology of it. Because if you're willing to like, yeah, it's a mythology. Like, I, you can go read, I mean, we're going to read um, the Epic of Gilgamesh when we're done with, with Enoch. And that's a mythology. You go, oh, well, that's not biblical. Yeah, it is. It's it's just as biblical as Enoch. It's just as biblical as, as Genesis or Exodus. Like, it... <laughs> It's beautiful, guys. It's beautiful. And and we're there's so much fruit coming out of this. And so what I really am here doing now is and and I I try to just move as fast as I can through the text, but at the same time, there's I want people to hear be seen and heard on here, but I want I want to teach you the mythologies. I want to teach you. Because when you understand more, you know less. And when you know less, you get the gnosis. The gnosis of Christ that universal Christ like by the way you can be Catholic Muslim Hindu Buddhist agnostic and atheist and still receive the gnosis of Christ by the way like because most atheists that I know say well there is no man on a cloud but there's probably some sort of universal intelligence or divine field or mind that like governs at least the principles of the universe and I literally have friends that are like, no, I'm atheist, but I believe in that. So that, that therefore, like, that's not even like the true definition of atheism. And therefore they have the chance, the opportunity to embody, discover and benefit from the universal Christ within them and find that kingdom of God. Unfortunately, there's walls around every side of it. And this has gotten so out of hand. And I'm just now in, I'm just now in it. Like I'm just now. You know, I kind of came out of like the exclusively Christian teaching and then I went like a little more new age. And now I'm like, you know, no, I'm my space that I occupy is I am a Christian mystic light worker. And I believe and teach Gnostic principles, which are which is almost an oxymoron because it's kind of like the lack of that, the lack of that structure. It's more about like the mythologies and like, who are we divinely like? who is God in us? Who was the Christ? Like how many Christs have there been? Like that same story of like the martyrdom of Christ, like happening over and over and over manifesting to the true followers later on. I had a conversation last night about that. You may say, well, there's only one of these. There's only one timeline, one truth. Like, well, why? Like, I'm sorry, my God's big enough to like send the logos multiple times at the same time on the earth, by the way. Um, Absolutely. Uh, but B. Sunshine said, he said the kingdom of God is within. Power-filled words. Yes, absolutely. And that's all I'm here to do, guys, is I want to take that power and give it back to you. Because that power, where way back in the day, we used to go like, oh, it's the whatever, the man, you know. You got to think about the time of Christ was so heated. Like, you had Rome coming in and doing all this stuff, and they were literally looking for the kingdom of heaven to come down on earth and release them from bondage and slavery and bring, bring their, the people that had been unalived back, back from the dead. Like right then, 2000 years ago, they're looking for this. And I still have people in my life. Now that are looking for Jesus to come down on a cloud tomorrow and rescue them when he's knocking at the door of your heart right now. And he is not here for the Christians. He's not here for any, you know, uh, the Baptists or the Methodists or the Catholics or the agnostics or the atheists. He's here for anyone who just opens the door, like literally. Well, you got to go to church after you have that experience. No. You probably should go to nature, which is what Christ did. Because if he's in you, he's probably want to go walk around in nature again. Yes, 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 yes. Sunshine says, amen. Thank you. So, 
Yeah, looking for enlightenment. Uh, agent, welcome. Uh, we search to touch the spirit that created uh, me. Only love and light uh, has taken me there. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, birds of encouragement. What's up, Kathy? How are you doing, my friend? Uh, yes, nature. Amen, Kathy. Amen. And so that that's my thing. Like That's the space I occupy. And, and I have to be really honest about that. Bring Christ to the world, detached from any dogma or doctrine or religious. Again, I don't care what you, what religion you practice with your friends or family or holidays or whatever. Like, religion is different than spirituality, and your spirituality is going to take you places you never thought possible because Christ is within spirituality. The true seeker will always meet the universal Christ. Not with a name, not with long hair, not with blue eyes, not standing next to the little lamb as the shepherd, but the universal Christ, the one that is power, love, light, the divine computation or expression of the Godhead present in each and every one of us as a part of creation, which is the key that unlocks the door to the very kingdom of God. Thank you guys for all the gifts today. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I th this is a good topic, I guess. So thank you guys. So that's where, you know, I read Colossians. I, I don't not read any of these books, by the way. I'm not, I'm not closed minded whatsoever. Um, but that's why I struggle with like the writings of Paul. Um, because again, I see that the Gnostics like had a spark of inspiration around this. Now, not all like, yeah, there's some weird, weird Gnostic writings. Don't get me wrong, but there's some super weird, like, uh, evangelical writings too, that are like only Bible based. So like you can, anybody can do whatever they want with any of this. I think that's the beauty of it. But I just try to find that place of center. As I said, in the middle of all this chaos, everything going on today, everything that's going on tomorrow and yesterday, let tomorrow worry about tomorrow, by the way. Jesus also asked for, he said, uh, you know, give us to stay our daily bread. By the way, if you look at the original, it was actually um, to asking God to go ahead and give us tomorrow's bread. Like, you guys asking for a blessing for today, like just, just to have enough. And Jesus is saying like, hey, go ahead and ask to be prepared. Ask for God to go ahead and prepare you for tomorrow. Like, like to maybe give you that overflow because he loves you. Because he's not going to give his son or daughter a stone when they ask for bread. And I get emotional about this guys. Cause I've been through hell and back. Most people don't have a clue what I've been through. Like the internal struggle coming out of like the whole homeschool thing. And like, we had to like burn Disney tapes and like my favorite video game in the world. I remember we did a ceremony with like our homeschool group. And this is not against any homeschool group, by the way. Like if you're a part of one, God bless you. Please don't do it this way. Please love your kids. Please let them find their path. And I'm not blaming my mom at all. Like she, she didn't like, we kind of got out of it after a lot of this happened and did our own path. So, but it was just a lot of the other moms that we were involved with. And even some of the dads, like we had to do a ceremony where my favorite video game, I remember I had to smash it on a rock. I had to get a sledgehammer and smash it in front of a bunch of my other peers. And it was devastating. Like, my favorite freaking video game, pardon my language. My my dog is named after that video game, Zelda, by the way, because it's so evil, because there were multiple gods in it and multiple spirits. And I'm like, well, look at your Old Testament. Just like look at all the mythology around it. Like it's so much of a conglomeration of a bunch of different ideologies and timelines and nobody in, can explain it. And, and so we just have to take it with an open heart. Like, that's why, again, we're going to read Epic of Gilgamesh and see how so eerily similar parts of that are to the flood story. Like, it's wild how some of these texts are so close to each other, which makes me believe that they're all based on some sort of event that happened that traveled thousands of miles between different cultures that everybody understood and interpreted in different ways. That's why I believe in, in the Christ, in that Christ energy, that Christ consciousness, because he's not standing here in front of me today, so I can't reach out and shake his physical hand as the person of Jesus or Yeshua, but I can know the Christ because that energy that he said, I'll give you my spirit, 
And so his spirit, I believe, is still here within all of us who are seeking that authentic reality. And so I know this is a long-winded way of getting to the mythology that I'm going to read today, but but it, I have to share it because again we had a, we had someone very kind gentleman on this morning that was you know quote after quote after quote of like here's the system here's the process anything else is just blah 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 and like it's quotes from a bunch of different scriptures that by all intents and purposes don't have a lot to do with each other. And so the more we understand this, the more we can be equipped with knowledge. And the more you know, the less you know. And the less you know, the more you can receive the true knowing. And that's what, I'm, that's what I love about what we get to do here. Uh, and just to have the authority to do that with, with a beautiful community. You guys are incredible. So thank you guys. Uh, Annie, thank you for the hearts. Uh, yes, Lynn, the light of the world uh happy little tree of life says i'm so sorry you experienced that pain thank you very much and i try not to like wear it on my sleeve but that is like again that's my mission like this is the space i occupy christian mystic light work that's what i do that's what i'm here for um and so again christian not being a, tra a religious tradition but more of because I do believe in the Christ. I believe he's in every culture and by many different names. So let's get into the mythology with that intro. Let me get a drink here. Okay, here we go. So Enoch says, and I besought the other angel that he should show me the might of those monsters. He's talking about behemoth and uh, Leviathan here. How they were parted on one day and cast the other into the abysses of the sea and the other onto dry land of the wilderness. And he said to me, Thou son of man, herein thou dost seek to know what is hidden. Okay, here's here's interesting, weird, interesting thing here. He's He's calling him son of man. Jesus called himself son of man. Okay, track with me for a minute. This is merely a theory and a thought. You have Adam. You have Enoch. You have Noah. You have Melchizedek later on. You have a bunch of these different like mystic avatars, if you will, incarnates. And then you have Christ. And it's interesting because he's asking for, and this is a bit of a Buddhist theory, so just bear with me. But he's calling him son of man, and, and this son of man is continuing to ask for the knowledge more and more. Like, I want the knowledge, I want the knowledge. Just as, as Adam and Eve in the garden, they wanted the knowledge, they got kicked out of the paradise. We don't know what God that was. There's a lot of evidence that that was not the God that that Christ came to to reveal so with that, it's almost like we really do kind of have this weird story of ascension in the Bible, like all the way to Christ, of like these characters who woke up, wanted to know more, sought deeply, and eventually were, you know, either martyred or in the case of Enoch, he was just, he walked with God and he was no more. You know, not literally walking with God, but esoterically walking with God. So I don't know, like, again, it's almost like the story of ascension of that Christ energy. Like as you move through the Bible, you see that same paradigm over and over and over. Um, so I don't know. I mean, that's again, like reincarnation or, you know, avatars. I don't know, but, uh, it's pretty wild. I think it's pretty cool. So, um, but Enoch was pretty, he was rock and roll. I mean, he's like, yeah, I want to know. Um, and so the angels telling him like, son of man, uh, from here on out, you know, do you seek to know what is hidden? Uh, and then it says "And the other angel, uh, went with me and showed me what was hidden and told me what is first and last in the heaven, in the height and beneath the earth in the depth and at the ends of the heaven and on the foundation of the heaven. So. Again, you can take this literally, you can take it esoterically, spiritually, whatever you want to do, but it gets pretty wild here. So, uh, by the way, we're in book two, book of the parables, chapter three, 
ver starting in verse 26 here, moving down. Um, by the way, this is interesting. Um, so the, this, this reads that Enoch was the seventh from Adam, from the way I understand it, which seven is a really important number. Seven is like the God number, basically. And if you know numerology at all, it's, it's a pretty powerful number. So I think that that's interesting with, with uh, Enoch being the seventh from Adam. Uh, and then it says Adam is the first man whom the Lord of Spirits created. Um, that is interesting because this places this, again, if you put it in, in context to the mythology of Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2, being two different books, like two different, not, not even accounts, but two different uh, parts of the story. And if you haven't watched my video on that theory, basically to sum it up, Genesis 1, uh, the theory is, is that that's Elohim, the plural, like the father, the mother, and the logos creating perfection in everything, creating light beings, like playful light spirits, beings, you and me, that are perfect and in unity with that, that Elohim, that father, mother, and that son. Um, so it's like this energetic creation. And then Genesis chapter 2 is where Yahweh Elohim comes in. And he makes out of that perfect creation Adam and Eve in the flesh, which is not good, you know, according to like the Gnostic tradition. And really a lot of religious traditions look at the flesh as like something to transcend type thing. So with this said, just with that, losing internet again. Okay, we're back. Lost the internet again. Um, so with that said, we're getting into, I can't tell you what this means, but this is, this is saying the Lord of Spirits who created Adam. So this would be specifically talking about like the Yahweh character or that Yaldabaoth character, depending on which mythology you follow. I just have to put that out there because as we dig deeper into this, we you know kind of understand the characters involved. And again, was Enoch speaking with the father that Jesus was talking about? Or was he speaking with a different God? Because again, I think there's multiple gods. I think there's one spirit father, the God of gods, that El Elyon, God Most High character, or Theos, Theos, that Christ spoke of, that Abba Father. And then there's plenty of other angels or servants of that Most High or Heavenly Host that we would consider gods by all intents and purposes because they're very powerful, um, especially in the mythologies. So I hope I'm not losing you here. This is where it gets interesting. Um, so he's asking him, do you want to know what's hidden? And he's like, yeah, of course I do. Uh, the other angel went with me and showed me what was hidden and told me what is first in the uh, heaven and last uh, in the depth below the earth. Then the chambers of the winds and how the winds are divided and how they are heighted and weighted and how the portals of the winds are reckoned, each according to the power of the wind and the power of the lights of the moon and according to the power that is fitting and the divisions of the stars according to their names and how all the divisions are divided. That's wild. Like, just the imagery, purely for the story side of it. Wow. Annie, thank you for the roses, by the way. I just saw those. Thank you very much. Uh, Merle says, I was raised up uh, Southern Pentecostal, and I will not push it on my kids as I was forced, as it was forced on me. Uh, good for you, my friend. Good for you. Um, nothing wrong with that, by the way. Like, there's plenty of awakened beings that are a part of many different churches, many different organized institutions. Uh, I was part of one for a while. I am not any longer, um, mainly because I'm just out here doing the work. If I wasn't out here doing the work, I'd still be going and seeking and drawing everything I could. 
Um, but like, again, I'm out here doing the work and I think, you know, everybody hits that point where you're like, you're awake enough and you just see those parallels and the contradictions and the truths and like whatever, you know, and, and then you're like, oh, I'm ready to go out and do the work. And that's where I'm at now. So, and maybe you're ready for that too, Merle. Maybe it's time to start, you know, home, a home study, a home Bible and spirituality study. Like nothing wrong with doing a little meditation and Bible time. Like nothing wrong with, uh, with, uh, blending those because I don't know that they're just not that separate to me. So, so we're getting into the winds. Uh, he says how the winds are divided and how they are weighed, how the portals of the wind are reckoned, each according to the power of the wind and the power of the lights of the moon and according to the power that is fitting and the divisions of the stars according to their names and how all the divisions are divided and the thunders according to the places where they fall and all their divisions that are made among the lightnings that it may lighten and their host that they may be at once obey for the thunder has places of rest assigned to it while it is waiting for its peal and the thunder and lightning are inseparable and although not one and undivided they both go together through the spirit and separate not now here's what i love about this this is this is tying spiritual energy to natural phenomenon which is something that that was especially in the early church i've done a lot of research on that and that was a big push to try to strip away any of like the mysticism about the natural elements and like god in all it was more about the divinity of the person of christ and for me i see that divinity in all i see christ in all and that has steered me towards a lot more self-acceptance a lot more love of others a lot more what I would call enlightenment, not because I'm smarter. You know, we, again, in the West, I said earlier this morning, we have this idea that um, enlightenment is like people that are like, oh, they're gurus and they're smarter and better than everybody. Like we just, I mean, we just immediately go there like, oh, they're super spiritual. Um, and it's not like that. Think about enlightenment. It's like you're receiving light within and you're charging up spiritually because you're receiving it directly from the kingdom of God through you. You wouldn't even be walking around if the Logos, the Christ, wasn't in you. You would not have life. Like, life is from the Logos, period. Life is from the love of the divine fractal of God, the divine mind of God, the divine unity of God. It is that love that even animates us. And so the fact that I even have a consciousness which is not just my own, by the way, I connect with the mind, is amazing to me. And I think it's absolutely beautiful. And so with this, you know, Enoch is adding back like these spiritual elements to things. So it's talking about that um, the lightnings are moved by the spirit, like they're directed by the spirit. And you may go, whoa, that's really like too mystical. Yeah, it's very mystical. And I'm, I'm not saying that I buy it a hundred percent. I'm just saying that's what they believe. That's what this book is talking about. Uh, that's where a lot of these mythologies get it. Now I do think there's something to that. I do think the field in the more you study in, in quantum physics and the more, hello, there's my alarm, uh, that I need to jump off of this. Um, the more you understand about that, the more you see that there is like a pattern and we're all a part of a massive pattern. There is like this intelligence in, in matter and energy and light and wavelengths and like it's wild. It is wild the more you get into it. And you, you can't help but go like, that's God. That's God. Like, I mean, we don't even know. Like, we don't even know. And so that's where it gets beautiful. And we just start to see this unfolding here. And I'm going to stop at verse 30 uh, just so we can continue. Um because tomorrow afternoon I'll continue in this and we'll do more where it gets into like some weird Norse mythology. We're actually going to talk about the Horfrost, uh, H O A R F R O S T and how it has its own angel here in Enoch. So like really interesting things. And then we're going to talk about the spirit of the mist. Again, this is where we're talking about like the elemental spirits. And again, you're going to see so much like of where we literally get especially in like modern theology we're like well don't deal with elemental spirits because that's like woo woo or whatever 
but you're going to see where like all of these Pauline books are speaking out against that. And then you look at the words of Christ and what he said and how it lined up and, and just culminated and tied together all of these different ancient beliefs and, and like the, the real true deep understanding that the kingdom of God is within you. And like he literally said that, that is one of the commonalities we have between all the gospels and the Gnostic gospels, not just the gospels and not just the Gnostic gospels, but they all agree on one thing. The kingdom of God is actually present within you and me. And I don't know guys, but for me that changes the paradigm when we realize that because no longer are we fish in a bowl swimming alone we are infinitely connected and in love with each other, with the creator, with creation, with all things that move by the spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ruach, the set apart breath. If you boil down the core elemental meaning of that word, the set apart breath. Earlier, earlier faiths before like the early church believed in a Holy Spirit as a divine mother. We've made it into a masculine. I don't care which one you believe, but I'm just saying you have a set apart breath within you and that breath, just like the lightnings will guide you. So I hope that makes sense, guys. I hope you guys have enjoyed today. Uh, we're getting into some deep stuff here, but, it, but again, this is a time where I'm just, as we get into the winter and we're about to get into the birth of Christ story, we're going to look at the Magi or the Magos. And then we're going to look at how from the day the Magi came, there was esoteric masters of magic and Eastern philosophy present in his life and tied to him all the way across. All the way up until the time he went to the cross. Uh, and he was even compared with them. There is even one theory, which I can't prove yet, but I'm going to continue researching data on it that the crucifixions that Rome did were held exclusively for practicers of magic or what they would consider uh, witches and wizards and stuff like that. Uh, they called them something different back then, but that type of uh, person that understood like who they are as a divinity and how to help heal, manipulate, you know, he calmed the storm, all of those things. You can see how they would easily like lump him into that category. No matter what you believe about him, you see how he would have been lumped into that. And that it wasn't just for common criminals because it was like a really drawn out process just to go through the process of a crucifixion. Horrible, horrible way to go. But, um, and that it was actually reserved for like a very specific crime and that that's what he was accused of by Rome. Now, we don't have that in the biblical text, by the way. But if you look into like the historical data about how Rome went about all of that, uh, you start to find some clues about that. So again, just a little tidbit, just a little crumb over there. You don't have to, uh, yeah, absolutely. Annie, unfortunately. So you don't have to buy anything. I say is a hundred percent gospel, by the way, I'm just here to present the data that I find and do some public seeking with you. That's what we're doing. Just seeking, uh, what's really going on under all of this. What, who are we really? And maybe in the process, deprogram from the matrix and tap into the divine matrix. And we do that through our acronym Mythos. Manifest yourself through holistic, original spirituality. It's yours. Not something someone else wrote down or told you. You know, somewhere deep within you, you know who God is. Not by a certain name or a certain bearded man on a cloud or a certain whatever. You just know how he's been with you for a long time since you were before you knew pain, before you knew failure or judgment or any of that. You knew him. That's why we must become like to enter into. You guys know what I'm talking about. The kingdom of God. It's in you. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, if you want to support what we're doing, we do have the Mythos membership, which is really, really cool. Um, awesome little community we've got going over there. Uh, getting bigger every day. It's 29 bucks a month. Again, manifest yourself through holistic, original spirituality. 
Um, I'm in the process of uploading like over 500 different video trainings exclusively for that community. Plus we're doing uh, private live streams within that community. Uh, we have Q and a back and forth all the time, just doing community updates. We had a, a brother in there, uh, post some really cool stuff he got to do with his family with some cool aura photography they were doing. Uh, they got to go experience that, which was really cool. Just a whole deeper level of this community. So if you're interested in supporting what we're doing here and then really diving down the rabbit hole even more into more spiritual training where you get to challenge yourself every day, not just to sit here and listen, but actually go through these trainings, go through like just digging through your own stuff in your life. Most people don't want to do it, but it works. And we get to actually work through all our stuff and start to uncover that light within and that kingdom of God. And we get to do that together. And it's an awesome, awesome community. So go check that out. It's over at cubcooker.com, C-U-B-K-U-K-E-R.com. Like I said, tomorrow we're going to get into later into the book of Enoch here. Really cool stuff with more of the elemental spirits uh, that I was talking about today. So open minds, guys. The, the more you know, the less you know, and the less you know, the more you can know or gnosis or um, inner stand, as I say, inner standing. Um, it's not understanding because somebody can knock the legs right out from under your understanding. Uh, but inner standing is something that sets within and expands and contracts with new data. Uh, it's always open minded. It's always loving. It's always forgiving. It's always pure. It's always spacious. It's always full of abundance. It's a beautiful place to be. So welcome. Thank you guys. Uh, the child's creator. Amen. Annie. Um, what do I think of the platform Gaia? Uh, Gaia is pretty rad. I'd love to actually be on their network one of these days. Maybe when we get big enough, we can, um, the area I want to move to hopefully, um, is, is right up there in Boulder, Colorado, where, uh, that's one of the things I'm manifesting right now to be near that, uh, that Gaia center is beautiful. They've got, it's called the Gaia dome or the Gaia sphere up there. And they do conferences all the time and they film their television network out of there. I don't love like every piece of content that comes out of there, but I love their commitment to just continuing to explore. Um, one of the things I think they need on the network, this is not affiliated with them at all, but I think they need this brand that we're doing here, whether it's me or someone else, they definitely need like to take, these mythologies and these like religious understandings and, and where they meet with the spiritual understanding and have someone to like go through that and start helping people with that. Cause again, that's my job. That's where I've stepped into and the authority God's given me in this space is to be a Christian mystic light worker uh, and just revealing the light within people. That's, that's why I'm here. And so, Yes, I love what they're doing, so go check it out. In fact, I had a, a profile link for a while where you could join, and I got like a, a kickback on Amazon, but um, through my redesign of the website, I took that off. But uh, but yeah, go check it out. It's pretty rad. Uh, let's see. Angel Appleseed says, it's very possible I can see it. Um, uh, Angel says, love that. Uh, understanding, that's awesome. Yes, yes, so... Uh, your work reminds me of Joseph Campbell. You're like the third person to tell me that. And I don't even know who that is. I need to go look him up. Thank you. I hope that's a good thing. Um, but I will go check him out. Thank you for that. So, um, I do want to encourage you guys meet with a group. Like you guys are into this. You're here. Um, if you don't join my group, find a group of friends. Like, um, I'd love for you to support me, but I also, I met with a group of my peers, spiritual creators last night for three hours and it felt like 30 minutes guys time stops when you're in flow like and and i'm not just talking about like oh it went really fast i'm talking about like entering a spiritual space of transcending physical realities i was so connected with these two guys we just had this like hugely open-minded conversation they do totally different work that i'm doing one of them does emotional alchemy the other one wrote a book called Original Sin is a Lie, um, and he's into more of the Eastern philosophy. Just two beautiful, beautiful souls that, that truly do love God and want truth in the world and want enlightenment in the world. And just to be able to meet with them was so affirming for me, not like, oh, I'm so good at what I'm doing, but it like really did solidify the space that I'm in. 
and what my mission is. And so unfortunately, you know, we've got a lot of different institutions across the world and especially the West here um, that have crosses on them and steeples and yet there people struggle within the walls of that to try to be something and when you have a spiritual community and you're not trying to justify any text or like this is the data so we're only going to work from that and you're just spinning off of each other and the energy and the emotion and the thoughts and the actions within that conversation it, there's some beautiful things that happen and that's that's one of the cool things we're doing yeah thanks for the fruit merle says you bet brother uh, that's one of the cool things we're doing over in in the mythos community so like i said if you don't join that or if you do join that please start your own group too like your own meditation like you know night where like you're just like hey we're here to talk about metaphysics we're here to talk about spirituality religion like all of the things and really come up with loving fruitful ideas around all of this like that's what i want to see come out of this whether you give me a penny ever or not like my mission is to just watch this kingdom grow because it's not my kingdom it's his it's the kingdom of god and it starts within you like you know truth you know love you know that authentic reality and you don't have to be told by someone else and jesus just came to show us where it is and show us that it can be done and that he was the fullness of that love of that uh this is marvell said what kind of dog do i have she is a great dane come here marvell you want to come say hi come here come say hi here let me turn just so you guys can see her because you guys ask all the time there she is oh she's there she's a great dane she's a puppy and she is just loving the attention she thinks this is her podcast I'd probably make a lot more money if she had a podcast. But. Sorry, I wasn't talking on the microphone. But uh, anyway, so yeah, love each other, guys. Find yourself a group. It's so important. Like, uh, again, I'm not telling you you got to join mine, but just find a group. Like, find some people. It could, like, this was three guys. It's not like you need 30 people to do this. Like, you could probably have a couple of open-minded people in your life that just want to get together, sit on the driveway, sit on the deck just spin off of each other like write down ideas share ideas like you're gonna i'm telling you the three hours last night was the most spiritual gold i've had in a long long time because i learned so much about the truth within me and it wasn't like oh i just got an idea from this other guy it's like just that energy combined like coming together in the name of truth and unity and love is it's a beautiful thing like it, it was so so good guys so Anyway, I highly recommend it. I love you guys. Y'all have a beautiful day. I'm going to see you guys tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time and 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. You can check out all of the spiritual resources at cubcooker.com. Uh, C-U-B-K-U-K-E-R.com. I know, Marvell. I'm almost done. She says, it's time. You've talked too long, Daddy. So anyway, love you guys. Y'all have a beautiful day. I'm going to see you tomorrow. Peace. <laughs>